on the all-wheel drive EM2. You know, you guys saw the nice dyno video. Uh, we actually did a little bit of testing, which uh, we'll show you guys in this video. Uh, since the car was on an all-wheel drive dyno, we were able to see the torque split between the front and the rear, and I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, what the dyno was saying was when the car was driving, we were getting about 50-50 torque split, and then once we started to get into the torque, it went 60-40, and then right at red line, we were at 70-30. So that means that the rear end was holding about 120 horsepower, if you take 30% of 360, which is actually very good. And I've been driving the car around, it feels amazing. I feel no slip in first gear, but when we start turning up the boost, we don't want that uh, rear end slipping so much because I'm pretty sure the, the torque split depends on how much the rear end is actually holding. So today, we're going to install a shimmed clutch pack and a dual pump assembly with upgraded springs and a drilled orifice. So, you know, I've been playing around with this stuff a little bit and I found a good way to do this. Hopefully everything works well. I haven't taken it to the dyno yet, but today we're gonna install these and go to the dyno. And then we can document the results. I can let you guys know what happened, but so far, you know what, this rear end is doing really well. A lot of people like to say the CRV rear end doesn't hold any power. Well, you know what, it actually does pretty well. So this car feels super fast and you know, it could just get better. So let's get under the car and get these slapped in. Okay. And if I had a lift, it's so much easier. What do you think, Dave? Definitely. <laughs> it's all good though. It's all right. There we go. Okay, take this nut off. And then, gotta get these eights off. Hopefully I got enough room. Yeah, it's a little tricky, this gas tank in the way. This was, this diff didn't come from California. Got it. Yeah, I was a little worried. I saw how close this thing was to the gas tank. I mean, I, I built in clearance for this exact reason, but you never know, dude. Sometimes you have just, the best intentions, and sometimes you just don't foresee these things. Okay. Oh, there we go. Easy peasy. Okay. There's a couple components in here that we need to maintain. that see that's gonna be tricky to put it all back together but I gotta I got a plan there we go we got some more fluid coming out and then we have three bolts that hold the, the pump Did you see that? Missed it. A little pin, it fell out. So what I was gonna do is turn this thing so that the pin is horizontal. Because without that pin, this clutch, I mean the, the pump ain't gonna work. Just make sure you have the dowels right. You know it, uh, one stayed in the pump, one stayed in the diff, so I just move that. And then that little uh, pin right there, gotta make sure that we line this up. And then I'm just gonna shove this bad boy on. And that'll be, that'll be half the job done. Then we have to deal with the clutch. I'm gonna show you guys what my plan is in order to get it in with all these little stupid ball bearings. And uh, we're gonna handle it. Put this bad boy on. Ugh. 
So make sure you have the dowels right. You know, it uh, one stayed in the pump, one stayed in the diff. So I just move that. And then that little uh, pin right there, gotta make sure that we line this up. And then I'm just gonna shove this bad boy on. And that'll be, that'll be half the job done. Then we have to deal with the clutch. I'm gonna show you guys what my plan is in order to get it in with all these little stupid ball bearings. And uh, we're gonna handle it. Put this bad boy on. So out with the old and in with the new. Yep, so hopefully this makes a difference. If it doesn't, well, at least we'll have a benchmark. We'll know where, which direction to go. Yeah, everybody just dismisses the CRV rear. And nobody actually has any hard data to back it up. So that's what we're gonna do. Do some real testing with a real machine that can actually measure it. But dynos are not that accurate, so we're gonna use a real dyno. Yeah. Okay, so this, this clutch pack right here is still stuck in the diff. And we got some ball bearings. Ooh. here we got oh yeah there we go see there's six bearings and then this one there we go Got one set that over it's getting stuck see look right here Got an O-ring to seal that. Nice. So it doesn't leak everywhere. Okay. So got the old one out. And then get ready for the new one. I think we'll be good. So here's my idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this assembly back together. I'm gonna slide it onto that diff, and then we'll just stick something through this hole to hold it and then I'll just slide it on. So, just gotta make sure that these ball bearings don't fall out. See, cause this assembly, this is what actually makes these diffs better than the older version, cause it has this ramp assembly that under quick acceleration, it separates and it gives uh, instant torque to the clutch. And then I also shimmed the clutch pack, so. Uh, there's usually a little bit of play, but I took that play out. Okay. All right, so we had to do a little bit of tap. This thing has to be in the center. I'd assume so. There we go. See? Now it sits flat. And then we're gonna take this bad boy right here and throw it on. Okay. And then this will go into the pump and then it'll drive the pump. <sighs> so, wish me luck. Gonna need your hand in a second, Nelson. Super tricky. <laughs> Now here comes the tricky part, dude. <clears throat> now give me a second. Oh, that's it, that's it. Okay, now, Nelson, here, can you, two hands, here. Wait, wait, ooh, ooh. Okay, now what I need is, put the extension down a little bit. Okay, now, you hold the extension. 
Got it. Just, just keep a little bit of pressure on it. I got it. And then let go of the housing. That's it. That's it. Let go. But down, that was so stupid. <laughs> well, we did it. So, just put all the bolts back in and put the flange, put the drive shaft, and then fill some oil, and then we are done. Golden. Golden delicious. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay. Smells like 85 down here, dude. Good old corn. Yep, corn juice. Okay, so. These little, these little guys right here. Let me. Okay, so the flange goes back on first. Needs to bottom out. Okay. So, the O-ring goes first. Yeah, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. And then, gotta put washer and the nut. If it don't fit, who cares? If it leaks, it leaks. I'll just buy a brand new O-ring from the dealer. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let me tighten this detent. We're good. There we go. Did it go? I saw it turn. Okay. Okay. Let go, Nelson. Okay. Put this bad boy back on. There we go. Go down. Yeah, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. And then, gotta put washer and the nut. If it don't fit, who cares? If it leaks, it leaks. I'll just buy a brand new O-ring from the dealer. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let me tighten this detent. We're good. There we go. Did it go? I saw it turn. Okay. Okay. Let go, Nelson. Okay, put this bad boy back on. There we 
go. Go down. Go down. Go down. Where's that tent? Oh, it's way out there. Actually, you know what? Here. I think that made the impact. That's it. Pump a little bit of oil and we are ready for a test drive. Actually, it went pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy. It wasn't too difficult. Right. We'll grab the oil. On this year is right here. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Battery popped out. Yeah, this one's actually a lot more convenient than the older style. So, I got a little pump. So, we just have to fill this until it starts coming out. And then, uh, that's it. Topped off. Yes, sir. Took like one and a half. Not bad. All right, so upgrade is done. Uh, time for a test drive, and then uh, gonna take it back to the dyno and uh, do a few pulls. Tune's not gonna change. We're just going to test the diff and see what kind of power it holds. You know, if we get an improvement, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I think it will improve uh, because I upgraded the spring for the pressure relief on the clutch. So it will be getting more pressure. So we'll just have to see another day. So we're gonna come back and talk about it some more after uh, we get those dyno runs done. All right, so we're back at Cartoon. We had the modifications done to the rear diff, strapping it back down to the dyno. We're gonna do a few pulls and kind of see where we're at and uh, see what kind of difference the modifications that I made. If they did, I'm really hoping they do. So we're gonna find out and have real dyno results. I'll show you guys what you can do. for today is to test the amount of power the stock rear CRV differential can hold. We have data from the last dyno session with Red ZM2 and we have returned to the same dyno to compare the spring upgrade in the rear differential to see if we can hold more torque and horsepower. As you can see from the last dyno session, the front to rear power to red line. The power numbers are 192 horsepower and 118 torque. This gives us a front to rear split of 62 to 38. After back to back pulls, the rear went up to 70 30. One. 
Alright, so we figured we'd get it a little dialed in. You know what? We added a little bit more fuel in a couple of spots. You know, the car had time to drive around, everything to kind of set in. Uh, but it's running great. And then we got some good info. We're going to go analyze it and then uh, tell you guys where we're at. As you can see from the modified CRV rear differential, we are getting a better front to rear split of 58 to the front and 42 to the rear, which means the rear differential is holding more horsepower and torque. With a small upgrade, we can use the stock CRV rear differential to assist the all wheel drive system a lot more efficiently with OEM parts and small upgrades. A lot of these older Wago parts are hard to come by and are often very expensive to acquire. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.